Welcome to Chapter 17 of the Kinsman Die Podcast, home of fantasy fiction based on Norse mythology that's written and read by me, Matt Bishop. In this podcast, I read my first novel, Kinsman Die, one chapter at a time. Every ten or so chapters, I recap the key plot points and provide some insight into the myths I've referenced in the book, as well as some of the creative choices I've made along the way. And yes, I used to recap every five chapters, but as I explained in my last episode, I'm going to change that format up a little bit. Basically, I want to accelerate the progress that we're making through the book. In chapter 16, we were with Hodor, the son of Frigg and Odin, as he mucked out some stables and remembered the man, the warrior, he'd been. And when we last left Frigg, back in chapter 8, she'd just had a vision of Baldur burning up aboard a fiery ship, and if you recall, Baldur is one of her sons. In this chapter, she's with her daughter, Hermod, and more on that after the chapter itself. Let's do this. Chapter 17. Frigg. Frigg folded her arms and frowned as Hermod flung her mud-stained cloak against the bench. He couldn't have waited, Hermod asked. I would have gone with him. I didn't know when you'd be back, Frigg said and the Jotun posed an immediate threat to Halls, or perhaps even Bithy itself by now. Your father had to leave when he did. Half a day would have made a difference. Hermod flicked her long, dark gold braid out of the way and put her hands on her hips. Frigg met the girl's gaze levelly. Of course it would have. You've been with your uncles. You know the warrior's life. I know what it's like to train and ride and scout and freeze near to death, and then to rejoice when I'm back in a warm longhouse. But a full-scale battle? Hermod sniffed. I could have helped him in Bithy. I don't disagree, Hermod, and I'm sorry that you missed him, but that's how it goes sometimes. He'll be back soon. Did he at least ask about me? Frigg crossed to the bench and picked up the discarded cloak. He hasn't forgotten his only daughter, if that's what you're getting at. So he didn't. Frigg folded the cloak in three quick movements and set it down, sat beside it, and looked up at her daughter. Tall and slim as a young elm, Hermod had been training with Gladsheim's army for the past sixteen winters. She stood as if she knew how to handle herself, and it made Frigg proud. She herself had learned to fight barehanded and with weapons, not that she had done so since the Vanir War. Frigg patted the bench beside her. I was as surprised as anyone when Gnaw brought word this morning that he was back. And when this whole thing with Heimdall and Vidar happened, off he rushed. She shook her head and spread her hands. What do you want me to say, Hermod? Your father does as he pleases, when he pleases. At least this time, he had a good reason. While leaving us all behind, Hermod said, the aggression draining from her stance. She unbuckled her sword, wrapped the belt around the scabbard, and sat. And what about Hoder? Did he ask about his other forgotten child? I understand you're upset, Hermod, but stop acting like this. Your father hasn't forgotten you or Hoder. Or me? Frigg wondered. Really? When I was nine, Hodor slipped away in the night, and father left that same way. Hard to not feel forgotten and abandoned. Just because we're not constantly talking about you, or him, doesn't mean that you've been forgotten. Quite the opposite, Frigg said, biting back the urge to lash out and say, Try spending twenty winters being responsible for absolutely everything that happens in Gladsheim. Even so, something in her expression must have given Hermit pause. Mother, I'm sorry, I didn't. Frigg raised a hand. I know, none of this is fair, as if the Norns give any thought to that. What matters, Hermod, is how we act, how we respond. Are you going to whine and throw fits? No, of course you're not. You've the best of both me and your father in you. Let all that show through, all right? Hermod leaned in and hugged her. She smelled of sweat and leather. I will, Mother, and I'm sorry, I just wish... That we'd drag Hoder back here, or that I'd pitch a fit and make your father stay? Frigg leaned out of the embrace. I'd sooner try to stop a runaway horse than make your father, or your brothers, or you, do something that any of you didn't want to do. Hermod smiled faintly. It's just that everything revolves around Baldur, especially these past months. I can't help but believe that's why Hoder stays away, and why father left in the first place. Frigg shook her head. Your father left all that time ago because he enjoys being out there discovering new things. Wisdom, lands, people. Not because of Hoder or Baldur. 
and because he preferred wandering to the constraints of ruling, and left her to deal with all of it. Do you think he knows? That who knows what, dear? That Hodor knows that father's back, Hermod said, wherever he is. Frigg wanted to say that she knew very well where Hodor was, in Ifington, with the young woman Hermod's age. It wouldn't surprise me. I had Gnaw send birds out to all the major towns. It'd be nice to see him again, to be a family again, assuming he stays. It would indeed, but for now you can help me get the city ready for midwinter. Hermod frowned. Uller said I should. Nonsense. You can take a break from archery or whatever else your uncle said to do. You just don't want the drudgery of planning. And in that, you're more like your father than you'd think. Frigg smiled to make sure the words didn't sting. There was time enough for Herma to learn that she could not anchor her life on her father or her mother. Or, indeed, on any of her kinsmen. Herma had to become her own rock. Well, folks, that was chapter 17 of Kinsmen Die. I hope you enjoyed it. Frigg was pulling double duty in this chapter, damage control for her husband and as mom to Hermod. In the myths, Hermod was a son of Odin and is a minor character, at least as far as we know, based on surviving texts. He really only appears in Baldur's Thraumer. And I chose to make Hermod a daughter of Odin because... For one reason, the Norse myths are dominated by men. And while Hermod is a minor character in the myths, as far as we know, I envisioned a much bigger role for her, particularly as it relates to a pivotal scene in my second book, Dark Grows the Sun. And I thought that scene would work best if Hermod was a woman. To make that scene pay off correctly, or at least as I envisioned it, I had to set the stage for it in this book by creating a believable character who would make certain choices in that future scene, and that groundwork needed to be established sooner rather than later. And then in my third book, Hermod continues playing a pivotal role. If you'd like to support the podcast, please rate or review it in whatever app or platform you use. Those reviews really help. And please share the podcast. That also helps a ton. And finally, please consider supporting my work by buying my books or in some other way likes, follows, Patreon, locals, etc. And I'd enjoy hearing from you. You can email me at mattbishopwrites at gmail.com. As always, I will be reading from the Havamal, the sayings of the High One. And as I began in last week's episode, I'll not only be reading from Bellows, but from the Larrington translation as well. Bellows, verse 17. The fool is agape when he comes to the feast. He stammers or else is still. But soon, if he gets a drink, is it seen what the mind of the man is like? Larrington, verse 17. The fool stares when he comes on a visit. He mutters to himself or hovers about. But it's all up with him if he gets a swig of drink. The man's mind is exposed. (laughs) 